Ah, uh, wait, what do I just do?
take a breath. So we'll see. All right, everybody, I'm here. Are you there? All right. So um, today I want to just talk to you about some things that are really important with creativity. And this is um, meant to be for anyone, not an artist even. Um, because I think that uh, creativity is a saving grace and a line to um, the universal self that is for all of us, including the earth. And um, it makes you very photogenic because it's um, connected to relaxation when you're being creative. All right, so um, you know when you're happy and laughing or whatever and your blood flow is really pumping um, and we feel good. That is what happens when people look at a beautiful painting and they've they've done tests and all that kind of stuff. Thankfully, not on mice. I'll be so glad when we end any animal testing. But um, that's how you feel when you look at someone you love. Your blood flow increases. Your heart opens. Your blood flow increases. And it goes to the brain that registers pleasure. And... That's an amazing thing to offer someone. And this also happens when you hear a painting, see a painting, or hear a beautiful song. So art in any form, film, writing books, is a really incredible gift to mankind. And I'm very much into, um, in this day and age, um, upping the ante with getting it um, taking greater care with our songs and our art and everything. I sort of see this as temple work in a way in that um, we do get some training in about being centered before we walk on stage, um, clearing our baggage from our energy field, getting our vibration up and then um, offering that in service to the people who are listening. And then that also includes offering that to ourselves. So before we, um, sit down to do music and start worrying a little bit that we won't have to um, take care um, and meditate. That's just a suggestion. Some people just go into it automatically. Our systems are built for that. So um, honoring this amazing thing. And if if we get to be artists in this life, we should consider ourselves lucky, very lucky, because we're working with creative energy most of the time, which is healthy and it keeps you your face relaxed and your skin full of blood and um, the photogenicity that I mentioned earlier, which is just a joke, really, because, I mean, who cares? Except that looking good is an energetic thing, and you offer that to people. When they see something, when you see someone who's, like, dressed up, especially from, you know, the, sadly, the generation that's just about to leave the planet. You know they're alone all week, but they go out um, to the doctors, but they dress up and they put on make. They just put themselves together beautifully, and it makes you feel good. And there's uh, there's generosity in that, in us doing that. So being happy, being photogenic, it's saying that you're um, people will look at you and and actually be nourished. So that's what we're hoping to do with our music and art and writings, et cetera. It's not how we were trained in the last many years, but I think it's part of how to approach things in this new day and age. Um, I want to say something in particular, that this new day and age, this day and age, forget the word new, is I personally think that we're on a really crucial, critical apex, and we're gonna go one way or the other, between uh, materialism being construed as the most important thing, and spirituality. And I think it could be very easy for us to slip the other way, as many civilizations have, and just been cleared. Um, but I, I hope that we can be like the one civilization that can turn things around and inspire, you know, go down in history as inspiration that 
we can, but I think we're very, very weak right now. So I think that working with music and any kind of art will be important because of the discipline of that and what, what is gonna be anchored by being conscious as we do our work. I think being an artist is a privilege. Um, I sometimes I go and talk to little kids and they say, oh, they wanna be on stage, blah, blah, blah. I said, really? Oh, would you give a dollar? Would you pay a dollar to be an artist and be on stage? Yeah, sure. Would you pay like $300? Uh, I guess so. What are you talking about? And then, and then the fact is that many artists pay to be artists. And that shows how important it is, how wonderful it is. And I don't have any solutions for how to be an artist without paying for it. I'm, I know passive income is something to really look at before you'd have records and they'd become passive income earners from sales, but now that's gone. So things like um, passive income, like um, maybe an Airbnb where it keeps work earning money, even though you're not, um, um, or courses like uh, the one I'm offering. That's me wanting to use my talents to generate while I'm working on writing things, new songs. Um, that's for anyone. And I would also add, um, doing it in a way that feels really good to your stomach, to your gut, which means maybe you feel comfortable getting grants, maybe you don't, go with your gut. Maybe you feel comfortable winning lottery money. Um, maybe you don't because you didn't earn it or whatever. Go with your gut. So as an artist, I say going with your gut is the most important thing you can do because um, you're an artist and you're super sensitive. That's your gift. Although it, you might see it as a handicap and often it's treated like that when you're younger, but not by me and not by people who are more aware of these things now. It helps you to use your gift, this sensitivity, and you're the barometer, you're the scout that goes ahead before people um, know. You're the, you're the sound of the ocean before people can see it. So it's it's an amazing thing to be, and I think to honor it um, is important. So that means working on your ego, working on things that get in your way, working on energy training so you learn how to use your energy when you need to or, or clear it when you need to. So um, it's a wonderful thing that you're sensitive, and even if you're not doing any art now, um, I recommend it as very important for health to be creative. And I, I think that when someone is making the most beautiful, um, setting the table for Thanksgiving in the most beautiful way, a light is going on on the earth while that's happening and it doesn't leave. It's embedded into the, the positivity. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing music or, or whether people are hearing music. Sometimes I think just having a great idea, that amazing feeling that you get, ah, um, it's the best way to give thanks to the um, gift of being on this beautiful planet. And also, many people are bored because either they don't have jobs, and we need jobs, some kind of job. Dogs need jobs. Everyone needs a job to gather the acorns, everything. It, it keeps you active with all your ingenuity, how to fix things, how to find things when you can't. And that's creative energy and that keeps you healthy. And I believe that someday they're gonna measure um, creativity on machines. So they'll actually say, if you take this creativity, do creativity for five minutes, it equals one multivitamin, that kind of empirical comparison. So, um, uh, I write in my own way, I just figured it out, had no training, didn't know I had to stand properly in photographs, didn't know I had to learn how to let the face read in photographs and all these other things. Didn't know I'd have to like create databases and run websites and all this stuff. I just had a drive to you know, express something that was meaningful. And, um, and that's, that's the beauty of it. I love doing all these different things. Um, I don't like it necessarily when artists say, uh, I had to get the song out of me. 
it's like, well, thanks a lot. Like, what did I just receive? So now I want to talk about word care. I think change in the world is um, is going to be pushed forward through words because words have power and they change things. And so if you're working as a creative person in some way, um, you're going to be so aware of the difference when someone says something negative to you as to when they say something positive. So for me, I try to lose things that make me tired. It's like a self-vampirization through use of words and through negative thinking. Everyone's learning this. It's amazing, and it might be our hope. So I use... Um, I feel so tired when I hear artists talk about starving artists and broke and sort of this and that. Um, they, um, the train is coming back down the track. Okay. Um, so I, I think it's really different when you say, you know, you say, Oh, I can't, I'm broke. I'm a poor starving artist, but to flip it into the dignified, speech, which is, I'm very rich because I'm an artist, but I don't have a budget right now. And you can feel the difference, right? I uh, do the same for old speak. People are saying, oh, I can't. I, I'm only 30, but I can hardly walk. It's like, mm, don't, uh, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. I lose that. I find that makes a big difference. And I, I just ignore people when they talk that way. Or, or sometimes I say, if if you're going to talk that way all the time and you live till you're 120, which is a possibility, am I going to hear that for 70 years talking like that? Okay, so old speak, starving artist speak, um, negative speak, of course, like criticizing, um, not judging as soon as you're about to judge or think something negative in words out loud or inside to flip it to flip it how can i help this person and open your heart it's training it's energy training and artists are at the forefront of all that um so when i when i write songs i figure out how to do it on my own um and i think that's the way to go i think everyone should trust how they work i still try to practice or I write up lists and say, I'm going to practice guitar every day because I actually, I want to play guitar a lot better than I do. And I know I can, but I'm not like that. All of a sudden I'll do guitar practicing or playing for like two weeks of my own accord and I get to the same level. I see it over and over again. So I'd say, tr trust your own timing. We're not um, meant to be machines. We're meant to be disciplined in some ways, but that can come from trusting your own flow. Okay. So um, songwriting, use of words, artists, so many people are, are taking care with words. So if you're a songwriter, I think it's really something that you probably do. But to be aware of every, every word and because you're creating this marriage of energy between the music and the, and the words and we all know the power that happens when the tumblers fall into place together. And that's the goal. And um, so when I write, I used to write very personally. And then things started to change. And it's changed when I was in New York a week after 9-11. And I was on stage at the bottom line. The show still went on. And I... Three times I had to stop the song and say, uh, this is really out of order with what's in the air. And it was because they were too me focused. Um, so I stopped and I said to myself, I hope I remember this lesson always. And I think I have partly. Um, so the way I write now is more like you. I'm speaking right to the person that time's short, if you believe in time, and that there's no time to um, smoke people. I did a songwriting workshop in long ago, and 
they had um, a few teachers and they were LA Nashville songwriters and the tents that they were working in were full. And I don't know why they asked me, but I'm so glad they did because I learned a lot. Um, I was in a tent too, a little tent with six people. And so I we went around in a circle and they played their songs and I was watching everybody and their eyes were becoming glazed and um, they weren't engaged. It wasn't giving, sending any blood to their skin. They looked worse than when they started. And so fine. And then I went around, I said, just to find out a bit about you, um, do you feel like telling me like one of the most special things that's happened in your life? And so they went around and spoke their stories <clears throat> and <clears throat> they looked better. The people around them looked better. It was engaging. And I thought, if we could only write songs that have this quality, you know, so no, that means like maybe losing some of the knee jerk songs and um, not wasting time, taking time to connect with someone as fully as you can while you are for three minutes. So I think that's a really strong um, lesson was for me. And often people tell me a story and I say, could you please put that in a song? And I try to help them, but I've learned that lesson too. You, you can suggest things, but it has to be their energy that's the steam engine, that the train engine. And if you force yourself on people, uh, well, that's, that's another lesson and a really good one to learn, but it has to be their will, not your will. And ultimately their connection with their divine will. So um, that's what I wanted to say about um, songwriting. If some of you are here just because you love all these things, then that's fantastic. But know that it's not the same as activating the force within and expressing yourself. It, it does so much for a human being. And this is what will guide us in our spiritual growth too, towards the light, like everything natural which is what spiritual growth is, natural, um, grows towards the light. Flowers never turn away. <clears throat> so um, it's something to do for yourself and the others, other people around you. You can't be tense and in your left brain if you're thinking of a great idea. You're, you don't lose your sense of humor like you do when you're stressed, et cetera. And so I'm going to... Um, uh, say those are my views on songwriting. Um, I'm not gonna say, oh, sit down every morning and, and write even if it's nothing. I don't, I don't like that. I start to feel sick, honestly. But if someone asks me to write a song or something, I'm instantly, I'm instantly ready. Um, so I'm not that kind of person if you want to learn about songwriting that way. I say just break all the rules and just get as close as what you can to what you hear in your head. And so what if it just continues on and never has a chorus? Maybe it's one long melody that never repeats. And maybe it's like two minutes long or one minute long or 20 minutes long if that's what the song requires. And you'll know through your gut. So don't think you're gonna learn how to write commercial hits with me. Although I do love commercial hits. They've given me a lot of freedom. Um, I love pop song is what I really meant to say. A real pop song where you just can't, it's so honey. It's so beautifully curved like a kitten's face or baby's face. And that shape of five goes into our brain. That's, that's how our brains are wired so we don't eat our young. So we want to write songs that will help people not eat their young. Or maybe just lick them but not eat them so i would like to say um i'm happy if you want to email me with any specific questions i'm going to look the questions in the chat that we have um, moderators here and i'm going to tell you a bit about the course that um i need to explain to you before you get too interested in it because it's a bit specific um i'm going to introduce renee colonia who is very French. Oui, oui. Oui, oui. Ah, ça, 
So um, this is Renee, who's co-hosting the songwriting workshop with me. Um, it's going to be a, intense, especially for me, because I I'm really want to offer my view, um, if I can, if I can help in any way. I, I think I I'm sort of a good editor, um, but I, I did it once anyway. Good editor. The other guy was drunk. It was a songwriting workshop. And he, he was drunk, so I went through his sloppy lyrics and cleaned them all up till they scanned beautifully. I don't know what ever happened, but I did eat a lot of expensive French cheese because we were at a chateau in France. I promise I won't show up drunk. Really? Good. That's good. I don't drink anymore. I don't really like being around that energy. I miss being, like, recklessly happy, but I think I'm I'm – carefully happy now <laughs> I'm sure happy not to drink anymore so um Renee do you want to talk a bit about yourself sure um I think people watching of course know Jane um I'm also a singer writer producer um I record all, and produce all my own music I think because the way that I think of music is sort of to create a an oral room where you can hear sort of everything around you if you listen in headphones or in speakers. Um, I did study recording engineering and I, I did take some songwriting courses when I was at Berkeley with Pat Patterson, who's an amazing teacher, but I knew that because he taught us all these rules, but at the end he basically said, these are rules to be broken. So learn the rules, but then go and break them and create something from your heart. So I knew he was a good teacher when he, he shared that with us. But I think what I find most amazing about songwriting, the way that I look at it, is you start with nothing. And when you're finished with a song, it's something that can be shared and felt by other people. And that is, that's, that's magic. That's such a gift. And, um, so the thought of working in this garden with Jane and with whoever takes the course is thrilling because I get to witness and, and sort of support someone creating or a group, however the, the group's way out, in um, creating something from nothing. And that's so powerful. So I'm when, you, when you say um, it's so amazing when you share it with people, yeah, go beyond that because what – you can share lots of things with people, but what what do you mean specifically? I think um, songs and specifically, uh, you know, words and music, they express things in a way that sometimes words alone can't, at least for me. So I think I, I can just give an example of if I hear a song that sometimes I don't even know what they're saying, but it makes me feel a certain way. And the idea of, of creating something like that and putting it in the world so that others can have their own experience of my expression or what I've had to say or musically or lyrically is, yeah, that's, that's, that's big. Do you yeah. think it's an ego thing sometimes where you just want to be loved? I worry about that with me sometimes. Um, sometimes, yeah, I think, I think as I've grown as a songwriter, you know, you talked a little bit about moving from the me to something else. I think as I've matured as a songwriter, yes, I think sometimes, or certainly when I was when I was younger and when I was less experienced, I think a lot of times it was about feeling and about needing to be loved or needing to be heard. And I think now it's more, um, it's a wider view, for, I think, from the way that I, I view songwriting. All right, so if we work with younger songwriters, yeah. um, will we be telling them anything about the wider view or should they just go through it like we both did? I think they should express what's in their heart. They, they have to express it from the view of where they are. That's very simple then, that's good. Yeah, I don't think you try to impose, yeah, I would never try to impose my view or how from from my vantage point i would say what is your vantage point how do you feel what is what is most honest for you because that's going to come through in the song okay honest yeah from your heart 
yeah. that includes honest. So just from the heart and of course really from, so you don't even need from, you just need the heart or heart or huh. what is, what is, oh, okay. Um, uh, th this course is unusual. That's why I wanted to talk to people about why, why it's unusual because I, I've been to so many weddings where the music was horrible. Um, it's so inappropriate. Like everyone's cringing, not just me. Like, oh my God, the song just called the guy a loser. You know, um, she's beautiful, but he's not in her league. So, uh, so I think to be in service of the greater, and that word is sort of a new way of musicians looking at stuff, I think, and appropriate for these times. Um, It'd be great to use our gifts to create songs that um, are that really create a different energy when it's a, an occasion, like um, a wedding that, you know, we know what we want to say at weddings or what we want to hear, or it could be funerals, or it could be songs for just when someone's about to die where the friends are gathered, but they get to like say words that, um, expand everything and put it in a perspective that gives brings peace to the person and the peace to the people singing um could be christenings i think we definitely need a song for amicable separation for married couples for married couples <laughs> you know just it's been great it's been great and i wish you the best life and i i um call me every now and then with a joke sort of thing um that kind of thinking that we think, but there aren't a lot of songs um, where we instantly know where to look for the song. Maybe there are, but, and christenings, what else, Renee? Um, coming of age, coming of age songs. I think of that because my eldest son just turned 13 and I was doing a lot of research, just, just, um, looking to see what was out there. There are religious traditions, but I didn't actually find a lot on just that transition from sort of childhood to the next stage. And I was thinking it would be a great subject for a song. What would you, what would you want to say to someone coming of age? Um, well, mostly to mm -hmm. trust their inner voice. Just trust their inner voice. For sure. Yeah. That's that so simple. So much heartache. You get everything. You get yeah. all the bonuses, all the value added, just trust yourself. Yeah, yeah. And would you say also to know that there's a circle of men around him for life, that kind of thing too? Yes, well in my my case, yeah, because he has two moms. So what we came up with as a sort of ceremony is we are having um, the men in his life write a little something to him on what they wish they knew when they were 13, what they wish they had known. Um, from the viewpoint of their connection with him and also sort of their specialty in life. Like for instance, my brother is a builder. So he might talk to my son about um, building a life, building a, building a, a, not a life in an outer sense, but an inner sense, like an inner life. I said. I yeah. Said. Yeah. I see some wrote it, wrote in here. They wrote a song for their daughter's bat mitzvah. Yes, Jan, she will appreciate it more when she's 30. <laughs> I love that. Someone wrote yeah. in the comments. Yeah, that's really special. So yeah. what I'm saying in this webinar here is that I think there's a need and anyone can do it. But uh, this, this particular course is we're going to focus on it. And um, I would like to have a song bank someday where people know where to go for special occasion songs or someone else should have it or something. Um, mm. So maybe some of these songs would go into it. So it's specifically designed for that. But that said, um, after so many of you submitted requests for the link for today, I see that your skills are wide. Some of you are just interested in, or just love words or whatever. And some of you are bona fide songwriters that don't really want to collaborate. So. Um, I rejigged things last night to accommodate everyone if you want. I'll be completely, completely there for three weeks. And um, um, Renee, I hope you are too. Yes, right there. 
I was hoping. Okay, so um, we can do different things. We can handle it. But um, yeah. So one of the one of the options, if you're interested in taking the course, if you're not, maybe just listen if you want. But I hope you were inspired to um, be more creative, no matter what. Even if you don't finish something, just know that a light's um, going on on the planet. It's a palpable thing, if, even if we don't have machines yet to measure it. Every kindness, all these things are so important with weaving the webbing or to help us through this really strange time that I think is an apex of sorts. And I want to, I want us to be proud of what we've done. Yeah. Not simply shaken off the back of the planet. So yeah. the two options are the first, which is the original idea, was uh, we put people in threes. Um, we look at your skills and we put you in three. So there's someone who does music for sure, someone who does lyrics. And so, so everything, a song can be completed with the three of you. Um, and then secondly, I thought a lot of people who don't, couldn't participate because they don't have the skills could watch everything because everything's recorded, of course, on Zoom. So they can't participate, but they can watch all the review sessions, feedback sessions that we're having with everyone. So that's yeah. a lot of stuff to watch and to, you can learn a lot. Um, so we're making that possible too. And then the third option, which I just added is people who are songwriters who don't want to collaborate. If you want to um, be a solo artist in the course, um, it'll cost more because you're going to have private sessions with me. Ultimately, that's what it will be. So we've got three options and, uh, and, and it starts Monday, right? Yeah. It starts Monday, Monday, flexible hours. You just have to sort things out with your teammates or whatever, but it'll be intense. And we hope that you'll, um, you know, if you do it, like honor yourself, have, um, have a bath with candlelight, get yourself, um sleep dream walk everything that you know works when you're being creative as opposed to checking your email all the time treat it as a whole as a chance to do something um in a different way and just by even doing that that just just even you saying it but just by doing it and sort of setting your intention it just activates everything. The energy changes, the energy in the world changes, the energy around you changes, I think, mm -hmm. You're in that creative place. Yeah. Yeah. If ever you're alone in the streets of um, India or, or Russia or Toronto and you get nervous, um, here's a story. A tea master was in a market in Japan or China, and he brushed against a samurai warrior, which means that he, he's, you can't do that. So he ha was challenged to a duel. That's what happens. And so this tea master went to his master and said, what will I do? I have no skills. Um, I'm just going to die. And the tea master, master, his master, master, said, when you stand in front of this person, go into the energy that you use just before a tea ceremony. And he did. And the samurai warrior recognized this as mastery, which is very high vibrational energy. And so there was no duel. And so I was told, if ever I'm scared, and sometimes I really am, you know, on streets by myself, um, to go into the mode before I go on stage, which is instantly the power that you have, close closer to your largesse, your most... Mm -hmm most of you, your strongest power. So um, I think that's really important story. And I, I can't remember what that related to. Do you, Renee? I was saying how just setting the intention of writing is activating a certain energy. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah. No need to that's say that. Um, anyway, uh, more about the course, Renee? Um, I, I don't, there'll be, there'll be things that get sent out to you once you sign up about the schedule. Um, they'll be via zoom with Jane and with I, um, 
Yeah. All recorded. We'll have Facebook group. Yeah, I already set up a Facebook group. So once you sign up, you'll get the um, link for that and you'll get the Zoom passwords for the kickoff meeting, which will be Monday, this Monday, uh, the 4th of May at 1 o'clock. Right. Um, and then your group, once you connect with your team, you decide what song um, you'd like to do. That'll be really fun to discuss. Yeah. I mean, you can do anything. Bankruptcy, someone suggested. Except like that. probably silence is the best kind of song for that. Bo is asking, can you explain more about the flexible hours? Um, will the groups of three be working separately, therefore setting up their own hours? If so, then when would the group be working with you? That's a great question, Bo. So um, you will be working independently with your group and you will set the times when works for the three of you. Um, so you'll be in working independently on the actual writing of the song. And then the schedule that Jane and I have set is sort of a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, in which we'll be Zooming with your group to sort of check in on where you are and support you in that, you know, making comments, making, you know, helping in, in whatever way we can. Um, so it will be both. The flexible hours, meaning you will set your hours with your group as to when you are all free to work. And then the Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, with Jane and I will be, I don't think we really set a time, right, Jane? Because it'll just depend on who signs up and how many people we have. Yeah, we'll have a calendar that people can choose a time from. But the third level of working is if someone's just focusing on the lyrics, you just work on your own, of course. And it also, lyrics, I guess, are, is the most important thing to me in a way. So if some, the lyricists for the songs, we can schedule extra sessions too, um, because sometimes that just takes takes longer and you don't need the two other people sometimes. Yeah. There will be flexibility on all three, on um, all two levels. Yeah. And you can choose your own song. And if you don't want to do a song for special occasions, that's possible too. I imagine it'll be the individual songwriters who might like to just do that. Um, but gosh, all the times I've thought, oh, is this like the dumbest lyric in the world? And I'm in the studio saying, I can't get it. To, it sounds like someone who just sounds like bad acting. No, no. <laughs> oh my God. I wish I had this kind of course to take then. Yeah. But, you know, in addition to the idea of songs um, for special occasions, I mean, Jane and I talked about a little bit too, is just songs that we need right now. I mean, with everything going on, there, there's, you know, there's a lot to be said about that. So it could be for special occasions or what you feel needs to be said right now. Yeah, just what's in the air. Um, yeah, so see that, uh, as people seem to know this about me now, but be, um, I'm flexible. People are always improving my ideas, but I think we have a really great structure for a course. By the end of three weeks, um, by the Friday of the last week, you submit your song. Um, so how do you submit it? You're wondering, well, one of the questions we ask when you sign up for the course is, are you able to produce a teeny weeny demo, which most people seem to be able to do now. So we'll make sure in every group there's like just something very simple. It doesn't have to be uh, glorious production or anything. Um, because then we have to dig past that to see if it's like a song in there somewhere. <laughs> um, so you'll get you'll get that, and then at the end you get to hear everyone's songs. You get to um, well ongoing community if 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 um, you felt good about it, um, and community with me and Renee. Yeah. And um, if uh, if uh, some of the songs seem right for the song bank that I'm creating, then they'll be probably done better and um, put in the song bank for producers and song pluggers and licensing people, et cetera. Yeah. Um, that's a possibility, but that's an aside. The main thing is to like train with each other to maybe get closer to what um, we what would be practical to do with our gifts. At least yeah some of our energy for that. 
Yeah, and I think what you just um, alluded to, Jane, is um, at the end you'll basically submit, you know, an MP3 of a de of the demo with your lyrics and chord chart if you have it, because um, that'll be nice to share with the whole group so that everyone can kind of hear what everybody else came up with, mm. and that will be available to everyone. Yeah. So there are many more things. Um, if anyone has other ideas for um, special occasions. I don't care how silly you get, but put them in here and I'll read them later. Um, okay, so any questions you see there that I can answer right now? Doctor. Uh, the link is going into the chat box, I think, right? Yeah. Are you seeing the link? People are seeing the link? Yeah. Otherwise, go to... Um, um, oh, so here's the link in there? Yeah. I've been seeing it pop up. Okay. Well, anyway, um, just go to janesibri.com. Give me 15 minutes. I haven't got it up there, but it's in my store, Magic the Dog. Um, but I'll have it up on janesibri.com, so it's really easy. And then you just you um, purchase whatever level you want. Um, work as a collaborator. Work as a solo control freak. Just kidding. Um, and thirdly, mm -hmm. uh, fly on the wall is like for, I think, $100, you can just... Um, uh, see all the videos, as I said, and watch the process. I just put my email in the chat, so if anyone has other questions, you can um, reach out through Jane's website or email me, and we can get it answered. Okay. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this. It was meant to be multi dual purpose to talk to all artists, to say um, this is what I believe is really important right now, um, artists and people who aren't practicing as artists. And um, that creativity is connection to the greater. It's inspiration. You, we all know how that feels. Inspire mm -hmm. is in, um, and then we outspire, and hopefully don't dump on people, but offer something really um, personal and from the heart and honest that can be used as magic words to say something other people aren't so good at saying. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we're wishing you all the very best, no matter what you do. Um, thanks for coming and giving us your time to listen. And um, maybe we'll see some of you at the course. And um, yeah, positivity is protection and is the way of artists, the potential way of artists to change things and um, makes you look good in photos. What more can I say? Yeah. So important. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.